Well, uh, Michael Hensley, thank you so much for for taking the time to be interviewed on the, the show. This is like the ninth or the tenth episode, so wow. really appreciate you taking a chance on kind of a new kind of creator thing and allowing me to interview you. Right. Well, thanks life. for yeah. Thank you for um, looking me up. <laughs> on the chat GPT. Yeah. Yes. You know, I have some notes here on your, your style and stuff, but really, um, I think it's always best just to kind of get it in the artist's own words. How would you like describe your, your art? Cause your art is so distinct and, um, yeah, unique. Like how would you describe your art? Um, it's really, it's really, it's, it's, it's hard when people ask me, like, oh, what's your art like? What does it look like? Um, it's kind of like trying to describe a song, like music. How do you do that? You know, there's there's so many different... I mean, I could... It's usually easier just to, like, show someone a, a photograph or a picture or, you know, the actual piece. Because um, it never seems to really quite convey what it is. Because it's not... My work's not really straightforward. Like, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it's not a landscape not landscape painting or figurative painting but it has it has those elements in it yeah it's just not it's just not obvious um, yeah. so I mean you could talk about like the process that might be a better way to you know get into like what it looks like or yeah yeah no I definitely want to ask about the process the one thing that stood out to me the most honestly was like uh, your you're consistent, like you're, con it's consistently, there's like a certain chaos to it, mm -hmm. but it's consistently that kind of chaos. So it's almost like cha chaos and chaoticness is kind of like a major aspect of, mm -hmm. of your work. Right. Um, that seems like a major theme. Would I be wrong in saying like chaos is like a major theme of your work? Yeah, I mean, yes, there is. I mean, I try to, um, or not that I try to, uh, it's like building up layers of like drawing and um, I'm trying, it's, it's, it's spont you know, the work is spontaneous and I'm building mm -hmm. up layers and I don't really approach it with like, I don't start out thinking this is what I want to end up with. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I try to, I try to, you know, tame throw a lot of stuff in there but also try to like you know dial it back so there's, there's a lot of push and pull like chaos and then sometimes i'll just white out big portions you know of the paintings to sort of calm things down and just you know see what see what sticks or what wants to you yeah know, be yeah there. yeah there's a certain like flow to it almost like I, I think i know what you mean when you say it's not just like chaos across the board. It's like there's pockets of chaos almost. Yeah, um, and I, I really, I mean, I like, to me, the density of like the thought and the action of painting and the ideas, it, I, I really, I, I really respond to the density of it, you know, all those things together. So that, so to, to me, it doesn't feel like chaotic. It feels like kind of dense and like multi-layered. Um, mm. But and yeah, there's a there the to most people it might feel a little cha chaotic, yeah. Because there's there's a lot going on and there are a lot of layers and ideas and just yeah that sort of thing going on. Yeah, some of the galleries that represent you have like a little statement. I don't know. That's it seemed like it was a statement you submitted. Um, but two of the things that it mentioned was uh, well, also layering. Like you were saying, like the idea of layering, I think that's like a very consistent kind of style that you do, just layering the actual paint itself. But in terms of like themes, like uh, exploring like the subconscious, and then mm -hmm. I saw subconscious and biographical or autobiographical. So is it you exploring your own subconscious or the idea of just the subconscious in general? Um, yeah, so I, I'm trying. Yeah, it's really, it's a hard, hard thing to describe, but um, through the process of working and drawing and painting, um, I'm looking for things that are not so obvious to me. Mm. Um, 
I want the painting to to reveal something to me. I want it, you know, I want it to show me something, which I know it's really it's hard to describe, but through spontaneous like action and activity, I don't know, it's this way of sort of like it's like divining like way of divining something or trying to like pull something out of this process, you know. Divining like, is in like having some other for like divine as in divine like well i, I guess i was thinking of like a divining rod like looking for water oh okay okay i thought you meant like divine intervention like divination oh you um, were okay yeah yeah so it's almost like almost like a, a shamanic kind of like activity mm. i don't mean that i know that's a heavy word it has a lot of you know loaded <laughs> meaning to it you know i'm not yeah. like a shaman or anything but yeah. you know i come out here i don't know what it is i'm I'm doing. I just kind of have to like turn my brain off and just really just start digging into it and mm. you know shifting out of um, just like my practical um, whatever day to day mm -hmm. worky work mind. Yeah, and going into a space where you know there's other you know things going on, which I'm unaware. You know, yeah. So subconscious like. Mean it, yeah, things that are like operating under the surface. So, so yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. It's yeah. hard to even, it's hard for me to talk about it sometimes yeah. because it is, yeah. you know, I don't really know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, as you know, like I just moved to Portland and on my way up here, I was listening to this podcast, uh, talking about uh, this guy, I forget his name, I think Charlie Morley, and he's like a lucid dreaming coach. Mm -hmm. He coaches people on how to lose a dream. And he was talking about the subconscious too. And how in dreams, the subconscious is kind of like, that's the most direct access way. If you want to try to consistently experience the subconscious, you feel like you're tapping into the subconscious when you sit down here alone, shut off your kind of cognitive yeah. focused brain and just yeah. to kind of chill. What is, what is that like? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's really, it's, it is really hard to get down here and get into that space, you know. It is for you? Yeah, I mean, there's so many other, like, outside things to think about, you know. It's, to get down here and, like, to be able to, like, tune out the, you know, outside world, it's, it's pretty difficult. But once, once it starts happening, you know, it's kind of, yeah, I kind of can... You have to find like a groove, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, because the people, the world doesn't really care if you make art or not. You know, they I don't think anyone really. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> would rather you, I mean, yeah, be doing other things. Yeah. So it's it's hard, and even just like you know, yeah, like my kid, you know. Mm -hmm. She wants to hang out with me, and this when I come down here, I'm not really available. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. That would be yeah. hard to balance that. How do you balance that? I just find, you know, I just, I try to set things up in a way that I'm able to find those little pockets of you know time mm -hmm. where I can just yeah, like I said, tune things out and. Not be distracted. Just, yeah, just focus. Yeah. Another thing that was in your, your statement actually was, uh, uh, which rang a bell in my head. I'm like, yeah, it is like that. It's graffiti style. Mm -hmm. the, the kind of subtle or not so subtle with some of these, but like just kind of way the gestural kind of like almost automatic and quick, quick mm -hmm. kind of... Uh, movements that you're making it looks almost like there's little notes of graffiti here and there did you do much of that when you were younger oh yeah no i've never i've never tagged anything or done any kind of graffiti or yeah nothing like that nothing like that um i do i use a lot of like mixed media um like materials like house paint like markers and spray paint just for mm -hmm. um just I just like to, to try different things because they kind mm -hmm. of force your hand and like lead to maybe some unexpected kind of things that happen when you, you know, mix all these things together. Yeah. Um, so people often, 
you know, say, oh, it's like graffiti, but it's, it's not, I don't I think it might just be like people see spray paint and they just think, oh, it's graffiti or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, one, one thought I had about that kind of um, statement is that, you know, like, people that are out tagging like an overpass or something are usually like in a hurry or yeah so you know there's a lot of gesture involved and sort of speedy kind of like i gotta make my mark and get out of here yeah this is true so there's yeah they're under the gun to like Mm. get in and do it so i i think i kind of work like that too like i'll i'll spend like hours just like 90 percent of the time when i'm working is just kind of like sitting on the sofa just kind of like looking around at things yeah and then there there'll be a burst of like activity where i kind of like just just go into like a little trance and just Mm -hmm. just kind of yeah total you know spontaneous mode yeah um so yeah and it's you know i like i so that in the building up of layers, you know, creates a lot of texture. And so you see that too, just like out in the world, mm-hmm. like on buildings and garbage cans. Although the graffiti yeah. artist probably doesn't have time to uh, sit there and kind of connect right. with their yeah. subconscious as they're getting chased by the cops or whatever. Right. So, um. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've, I've never really used that word to describe my work, but. Oh, really? It was in a statement. Graffiti, really? yeah, graffiti style. Oh. You gotta contact that gallery. Yeah, <laughs> I may not have written that, that statement. Yeah, they may be they may be edited it a little bit. But you know, and two, it's um, I do appreciate sort of you know like honest like gestures and imagery and you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, nowadays here in town, it's just so it's like so ubiquitous. It's like everywhere. I don't even. Every once in a while, I'll see something that's really just feels, you know, super like I wouldn't say naive, but less because it's also very stylized, right? Are you talking about the graffiti? Yeah, graffiti, graffiti work. Yeah, but sometimes I'll you'll see something like a drawing or just like I'm like oh, it's really cool, you know, it just comes from this sort of pure place. Yeah, it's not. I'm trying to be a graffiti artist and do this, you know, guy with sticking his middle fingers up or what? I don't know, you know. Yeah, something kind of vulgar. Yeah, sometimes I see that or, stuff. Or just like it's a word, but you can't even really read the word. Um, yeah. That might be more of a Bay Area thing. But um, yeah, no, you do, you do have a lot of mediums that you kind of explore. Is there kind of a, a thought process or way that you kind of navigate that because i feel like you know artists what they do it's like so many creative decisions in the day and Mm -hmm. it's taxing um at least for for most people like it's it's very taxing to even just make small decisions and they can all add up so when you're looking at all different types of mediums like a spray paint bottle a paintbrush Mm -hmm. a fine tip paintbrush or maybe you could do like some drip painting like you have all (laughs) these opportunities is there like uh um, a way that you kind of navigate that uncertainty and, and deciding? Um, it's usually, well, I'm also like, I do like the painting contracting. So I have a lot of house paint stuff laying around and big yeah. brushes. Mm-hmm. And so I just, it, I, you know, started using those like tools I use for like painting houses, mm-hmm. like the big brushes, like scrape paint scrapers. I'll do a lot of scraping. Mm-hmm. Just kind of, it's kind of a way to just throw a monkey wrench into the process. Like, I'll be working on something and like, ah, oh, man, it's just not really just something. I don't know. I'm kind of stuck here or I'm attached to what's going on. And then, mm-hmm. so getting out a can of spray paint or, you know, like house paint mm-hmm. and just, you know, just kind of just like, are we allowed to curse on this? Go for it. Just, yeah. you know, like fucking it up. The, yeah yeah and so it's kind of like also too like it's with spray paint it's kind of irreversible because it's on there it's done it's, mm-hmm. so it's kind of a way of like forcing myself out of like some you know like mode or 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. Kind of like, uh, yeah, it's like sort of like twisting it or kind of just, yeah, yeah, just messing it up. To force you to kind of get back into the flow. Like or just to, you know, just to say, okay, this, just to, like, in order to move forward. Yeah. You know, just to, yeah, just like you said, throw a monkey, monkey wrench into the process. Yeah. Because, you know, you get, you know, I'll get stuck looking at something and just kind of start picking around at it. And yeah. It's, but sometimes it, it needs, like, a big move. Mm -hmm. you know in order to like grow or become something different so yeah so yeah. yeah I kind of to me that's exhilarating to be able to do that because it does it's kind of a big deal you know it's kind of scary and oh what if I fuck this up you know what if what if mm -hmm. what if you know and but damn it's just kind of sucking this kind of sucks right now and yeah so just like okay close your eyes and just <laughs> yeah and yeah just throw something else yeah just yeah mess it up what percentage of the time is that a win versus a oh shit it looks even worse now <laughs> oh what <laughs> like what percent what percentage of the time is that a win like it's like oh uh, i'm actually happy with that or is it like a, oh shit now i gotta fix that because it looks even worse um, I try that, not to try not to judge it so much. Like, oh, oh it's interesting. Worse, or it looks better. Okay. It's usually kind of more of a like feeling about. Um, yeah, yeah, it's hard. Sometimes it is like, why did I do that? Mm. Like the next day, cause I, I take photographs a lot of things just so I can see it, you know, at a smaller scale okay so when i look at a painting on like the phone mm -hmm. it's like i'm standing like uh, you know 20 feet 20 or 30 feet away because it's shrunken down and it changes all the oh interesting yeah you know it's like a, if, if, yeah so yeah. um where am i going with this thought does it just help with seeing it from a different perspective like if you yeah. throw on some yellow and it's like everywhere you want to see it from a different yeah in a different way kind of lost my train of thought there with we were That's talking right. about the, the monkey wrench mixed media thing yeah well it's funny because it's uh ronnie Gennotti, the uh, italian painter the third artist that i had on the show he's in san mm -hmm. francisco said a very similar thing and he's also um abstract um in his approach for the most part mm -hmm. um kind of like formless things some of his stuff has form like the painting he was working on when i was there it was like a tree it had like a tree essence to it but it was mm -hmm. so kind of you know blurred at the same time mm -hmm. but you kind of got to feel you're looking at a forest but anyway he said that like anytime he feels stuck and he gets in like a perfectionistic kind of tendency of, in his in terms of his mindset he would do a very like to the T, kind of what you're saying, he mm -hmm. would just squirt some some paint on the canvas just right. to just to get something on there. And uh, I think he said something like Picasso said a very similar thing himself. He actually like took that from Picasso of like nobody likes pretty paintings. Mm -hmm. The idea being that like a nice landscape painting, <laughs> right? But they do is nice, but it's not it's not uh, it's not like wow. You know, so like taking yeah. a risk can like lead to some of those things. Um, I'm kind of curious about like color though, like too. Cause, like as an abstract person, like how much thought do you put into the color? Um, that's pretty. I'm I'm terrible with like pal. Like I I see photographs of like artist studios where they mixed all their paints up. You know, they have every you know shade or tone of just have it all laid out they know exactly what's going to go on the painting and mm -hmm. how that yeah how that's going to work in the end but for me i just kind of once again it's it's all just i it's just all like spontaneous i do most of the mixing i do and is done like on the actual canvas. on the canvas oh wow yeah um and that's maybe you know partly related to um i don't want to think too much about it mm -hmm. i just kind of sort of 
like it's like I'm in this dark room and I'm kind of just like feeling my way through yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah. So it's, I don't, I think about it more. It's just more of a feeling kind mm-hmm. of way. I just kind of like feel my way through it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't spend a whole lot of time. Yeah. With, with it. I mean, there are, I mean, obviously, yeah, I mean, there are, you know, there is, I mean, if you look at all the work up on the wall, you might be like, oh, this guy's using like a, whatever, a, a more muted palette, with little pops of color here and there, mm-hmm. kind of thing. But I don't think about it that much. I wish I did. I wish I had the patience to, and the time. Mm. To do that, also I work mostly with um, like acrylics. So for me, it's harder. Like with oils, you can mix up your colors and they can sit out on your palette for you know extended periods of time and they don't dry up. But like mm. acrylic, you know, within an hour or so they'll they'll start drying. So yeah. I have to work kind of you know quickly and and once again, yeah. I kind of don't want to know really. I kind of want to be surprised. But what, what's happening? Yeah, but it seemed, I, it seemed, seemed, sorry, go for it. But I do admire painters that can do that. That can like mix it up very yeah like, have organized, a, you know, really um, yeah pre-planned palette and yeah. I don't think about you know color theory or so much. Yeah, yeah. It seems like you really value spontaneity. That's a very important part of your work um, and as a, like a practice even mm-hmm. like the actual process needs to be spontaneous, which I find interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I I've thought a lot about that. And um, one thing I keep going back to is, I mean, I want to, I want to have an experience, you know, making the, the painting. Mm-hmm. I just don't want to make paintings, you know, yeah, I want to like I want to feel something. I want to have like an experience or some. I want to have an epiphany, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's, yeah, it goes back to this the spontaneity thing. It's very difficult though <laughs> at times. So. I just, just want to see some. I just want. I want yeah. like. I want to see the finished painting, but I don't want to go through all that bullshit, you know. But they wouldn't be the same without it. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be the same without like the struggle and the emotional mis- labor. Yeah, the mishaps and the, you know the little surprises and yeah. To me, that's 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 what I what's most most fascinating about it. When you look at your works uh, as completed pieces, is are there are there images or or thoughts? connected to your past or just like the general past or or like really what I'm curious about is, is, is there content to this connecting to the subconscious or is it more so just like connecting to the subconscious in a, in a practice as you're making the art, but then even as you look at it at the end, you're like, I don't know what that's about. You know, because I feel like that's a very common experience that like people see looking at even like Mm -hmm. lay people like that aren't really into art. They look at an abstract painting and they're like, I don't have no idea what the artist is going for, but it looks pretty or maybe it doesn't. And then sometimes the artist is like, I don't really know either what was going on, (laughs) but it's it is kind of pretty, you know, or or is it more like each piece to you means something? Um, It's usually like. Sometimes it's like ten years down the road. I'll look at a painting and be like, "Oh yeah, okay." I kind of I know what that's about now. It's not it's not mm-hmm. always so obvious. Mm-hmm. Or you know, I can like there'll be words or certain images that you know resonate with me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, but there is you know there is there are a lot. Of, I mean, there's a lot of repeating like images that I've used throughout the years, you know, mm-hmm. and shapes and forms and colors. And, um, yeah, I forget the original. It was a mouthful. Really. I was just curious. <laughs> I was just curious about, uh, whether you kind of assign meaning to each piece after you're done with them. Um, 
Yeah, no, not really. It's, sometimes it'll... Yeah, it's, it's weird. Like this painting over here, was there, a Def Leppard song came up on the... <laughs> you know, the iTunes, whatever. And so I wrote Fool In on the canvas and that was... Mm-hmm. And then I kind of you know, erased part of it. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, now I think about what that means. Mm-hmm. How does the, you know... Because oftentimes, you know, I, f- I feel like a fool out here. You know, mm-hmm. just do do do. So there's a lot of um, ideas that come through through the you know that happen while I'm working, or and it's not always it's not a, a, always so obvious. Um, but I do I I do think that through like the process, I do channel a lot of like just sort of like stuff, you know, like. Yeah. Is the dog snoring gonna pickle? <laughs> the eye, <laughs> the eye opening. <laughs> um, I didn't notice it until you said okay. that, but it might be. I'm not sure. Wow, he's big chilling over there. <laughs> um. Yeah. So yeah, there. There's repeating imagery but once it, it yeah. is kind of automatic you know but mm-hmm. the teardrop is a reoccurring thing um yeah is there any significant meaning to that that you assign yeah it's almost every piece it's kind of a, it's it's like a it depending like over here it's like a little thought bubble you know it's the same shape it's like a circle with a triangle, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and there were some other works of yours on your website where there was a person, literally a person with a thought bubble or a conversation bubble. Um, but yeah. yeah, it is a reoccurring shape and maybe it just comes from, I don't know, being here, like in the Northwest. I know it's very literal, you know, all the rain and, mm-hmm. you know, and like I'll have like a teardrop shape with a like happy face on it so there's this sort of um irony there yeah i don't really think about it It just kind of happens but it it is it's kind of like to me it's like a has it's like a soothing kind of like shape and form i don't know it is no it is a soft form i love when artists just get obsessed with certain shapes for no no particular reason and they kind of just do that um over and over and over again so that's kind of seems like it's one of your distinct shapes it is a very soothing form um at least that's the feeling i get (laughs) when i see it um yeah and it's not you know like i said it's not so literal like people like oh why is this person's artist sad sad sack i didn't think that but maybe i could see how someone could think that um so so there's a yeah yeah, like a duality you know i in, in my work, there is like some darkness or sadness and there's happiness. It's just all, you know, all this stuff we feel like on a daily basis or. Yeah. So. <clears throat> um, yeah, going, going back to kind of your, your, uh, your childhood and stuff Uh-oh. and your, your, <laughs> your bio. I'm curious, uh, you know, growing up in Virginia, how do you feel like that kind of shaped who you are before you moved out here to the West Coast? Um, man, that's that's a heavy question. <laughs> I didn't mean to just drop that, but um, <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, um, no, I was just yeah, go for it. Well, yeah, I mean, I've thought about that too. People are like, oh, you're so talented, and blah blah blah. Or you've been, you know, I've been drawing and painting all my life, but it's um, and I've. So my parents like divorced. It was when I was like very young, like five or so. Um, and it was pretty, a pretty horrendous experience for me. And um, I remember at school always getting attention for like drawing and painting. People were like, oh, you're so good at drawing or blah blah blah. You can can you do the you know the thanks Thanksgiving like turkey on the whatever, you, you know, the calendar board or... I, I, yeah. Keep, so I I think for me, 
growing up, it was a way to like get um, sort of love or attention. Mm, it mm-hmm. made me gave me some worth, made me feel like I was worthy somehow, or because mm-hmm. um, I didn't really, I didn't really get that from my family. Mm, or mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, th- that's just one, you know, one sort of thought that I've had about it. It's a way of like, hey, look at me, I can, I'm. Oh, I'm good at something? Oh. Yeah. And it didn't mean I was talented. It just meant um, that there was some, I guess, value for me and the attention that I got from it. Yeah. And does that sound weird? Not at all. It probably is. No. <laughs> I think attention is, a, is like the equivalent of love when we're super young. My parents yeah. also divorced when I was like four. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that is hard. And I think getting attention for anything when you're young is like, oh, wow, I'm yeah. I'm good at or I'm good at something, or I'm getting attention for this thing, and then that kind of becomes solidified as a thing, mm-hmm. at least the bare minimum of like interest. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I th- it's still kind of like that too. I'm like, why do I do this? You know, I if, mm. and it's because I, f- I feel like you know there's there's some worthiness to to it um you know i even when i sell work i mean there's this i don't know i you know getting a check for a painting is just kind of like that's fine and feels good for a minute but it you know it's it's not the reason why i ever chose to be an artist you know it's, it's about i think just re- giving and receiving love in the world somehow Mm. That makes sense. Do you remember your first drawings? <laughs> um, not really. I did a really great Iron Maiden Eddie in high school. Oh yeah, a little pen, you know, <laughs> pen and ink drawing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't really. Yeah, no, I don't. I I know there was. I made a lot of stuff when I was a kid but that all I think got well, thrown away obviously as most kids are does mm-hmm. but no I wasn't I never I never thought of it as like being like something I could do you know as a career or as an adult yeah. as a kid it was just if maybe it was even just sort of felt like um like a survival you know technique or mechanism mm. like because you know, because of the broken family, and you know, kids need you know love and attention, and so this was kind of like a yeah, like like a survival technique, I think. Yeah, interesting. It's um, an interesting idea. So yeah, I don't remember because yeah, it was yeah, things weren't preserved or. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't until, you know, as as an adult, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life that I thought that, you know, art could be something that I could, you know, do. I see. So you returned to the art. Yeah, I was like, do I want to... Yeah, I was trying to find some direction in my life because I never had any. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do I want to do? You know, do I want to... And I grew up, you know, I grew up you know poor we never had any money or Mm -hmm. there was there were you know no ski trips or vacations or anything so i didn't really Mm -hmm. i didn't so money like wasn't i'm like do i want to make a lot of money i'm like no that's that that doesn't bring anything good into the world and Mm -hmm. so anyway it just it just boiled down to art i'm like what can i do in this life that's not harming anyone or the planet i mean there might be some environmental considerations with using some of these materials but Mm. so making art seemed like the most harmless and helpful thing that i could do Mm. as a human being you know i mean there are other things but yeah you're like what what am i talking about no i think that's i get lost in like answers to questions because they lead to other yeah. no that's kind of what they're for honestly and and i think i think that's a common kind of 
uh, theme. I think, are you getting a text from your daughter there? Or is that? No, we're good. That's okay. Just, that's just a picture. Oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, I think that's a common theme that a lot of artists have actually about like mm -hmm. the idea of, of wanting to have an impact uh, in the world with their art that might not be measurable the same way that like dollars and cents can mm -hmm. be measurable, but more so like on an emotional level, having an impact on someone. Yeah. 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 Um, did you have any inspirations growing up when you were, when you were doing the art thing when you were younger and throughout high school? Any um, figures that... Not that I recall, no. Yeah. Another thought I had, it was, just, it was also too just kind of like a safe space, you know, for me. Where I could just focus on something. Mm-hmm. Sort of tune out. Yeah. The outside world. Because there was, yeah, there was a lot of negative stuff going on and... But no, um, not until, um, I forget, I think it was 19 or 20, mm -hmm. I, um, I took, I thought, oh, I take, maybe I should take like a sculpture class and it'll help me to like learn how to draw the figure better. Mm -hmm. And so the, um. The instructor was this amazing um, artist and human being who um, he. Uh, I, your, the question was about influences, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he um, he brought this. He was a sculptor, and mm -hmm. he was also he also did drawings, and he written this amazing sort of like illustrated. It was like a comic graphic novel, mm -hmm. and you know there's a lot of. Um, he was really into like, so the, the, the reading for the class was um, Joseph, the required reading was Joseph Campbell and the Power of Myth. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with? I am, yeah, Joseph Campbell. Yeah, I'm a big fan of So he was yeah. you know, into comparative mythologies and religion. And mm -hmm. um, so I, he, I read that book and it just totally like kind of blew my mind. And especially the part about like following your bliss and being on... You know, being on the the path that you're supposed to be on, mm -hmm. um, and how you know finding that and recognizing it, and mm -hmm. so that was like you know light bulb went off, and yeah, and I was really into it, and um, so my teacher he 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 also ran like a bronze casting foundry. This is uh, this Robert is, Bricker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's in there too. Damn, okay, knew everything about me. Um, so he just he he brought his book to class, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I really want to copy of this, you know. But it was like thirty five dollars. Yeah, and he's like, Well, I really need. I could really use some help at the foundry. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could, you know, come like do some work and you know, yeah, pay it off. Yeah. And um, so I got, I kind of like um, got sort of welcomed into this world of like his world of artists. His wife is a photographer and I met like other artists there. There's like this whole community. Oh, wow. There in Virginia that, you know, I'd never been exposed to. And um, so I kind of got welcomed into this world of like, artists and creative people and you yeah know, learned about like mythologies and religions and philosophy and all this stuff and it's yeah. kind of like so that was like and i f felt like i was actually you know like i was once again like i was i was actually worth something as a human being mm -hmm. you know um so they they kind of like put me on this path you know mm. um there's more to it, but yeah, just that experience was, you know, finding a teacher. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. So Even like, if it wasn't your chosen medium you're doing now, um, it, I feel like that's still huge to have any type of creative influence at such a young age. So you were 18 and this was your art teacher and he also happened to have a, a bronze foundry yeah, he, yeah, he, he was an artist. Himself. Yeah, he was a sculptor and cast like, you know, artwork into bronze and aluminum 
Mm -hmm. and they'd have like weekly like modeling sessions where a model would come in a bunch of people would get together and drink beer and draw wow. you know draw pictures nice um yeah to me it was just like crazy mm -hmm. that must have been really like different for you i would imagine yeah, yeah and in, at the time yeah charlottesville virginia it's you know it was a college town and the only other opportunities or things that people, you know, we could, before that, you go like out in the woods and drink beer and mm -hmm. shoot guns and go mm -hmm. catfishing and, <laughs> you know, yeah. just you know, like, just kind of like stupid shit. Uh -huh. and so that world opened up to me and was like, oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty, I mean, it was, altered my life. How long were you there for? Working in the under the under Robert, yeah. The timeline as I get older becomes less distinct. So I don't know, like maybe four years. Four I was years there with them. Nice. Yeah. And you were just learning bronze uh, techniques. Exactly. Yeah, I was making sculpture and working in the foundry. Um, like doing, um, working with, so he would, you know, do work for hire. People would bring him artwork. Mm -hmm. So I would, you know, design like, it's called spruing, which is metal flow channels mm -hmm. on the pieces. We do mold making. Um, I do like metal chasing, like, you know, cleaning up bronzes after they've been cast. Okay. Just every little step of the process I was yeah. involved in. So you so, could make a bronze sculpture like after when you left you'd be like you knew everything all the tricks of the trade of, of bronze sculpting yeah yeah i mean it's you know it, yeah yeah i could do you know most of the things not by myself i mean yeah the well, thing like like pouring bronze is like a multi-person kind of like mm -hmm. operation um, a lot of equipment too, I imagine. Yeah, no, I it's very, yeah, it's labor intensive and expensive, um, and yeah, you have to have all the, all the tools and the space and yeah, yeah, nothing I would ever aspire to do on my own. <sighs> yeah, that's a lot more l labor intensive. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, I c could, I also I studied printmaking in college and even mm -hmm. the idea of like setting up a printmaking studio was a little daunting you know for someone with no money mm. yeah know, just like, for the financial incent like well just like a, you know, a printing press and the space to have that and then acid yeah. baths and just all that stuff like for me i didn't i did take painting classes you know at psu but i always thought i'd be a printmaker after because i really dug the drawing Mm -hmm. you know aspect mm -hmm. of printmaking and so when I graduated I thought well I guess I'm gonna just have to learn how to paint because that's all I can afford <laughs> to do right now you know mm -hmm. so yeah so you were at the foundry and if you started around 18 so four ish four or so years so you're like 22 how did you go from the foundry to PSU what was that? What was that transition like? And then you decided also that you didn't really, you weren't necessarily interested in sculpting, but you wanted to do painting. Well, um, <clears throat> I came out. A friend's friend lived out here, and he's like, "Hey, I'm going to go to Portland, Oregon. Do you want to come? You know, you have a place to stay. You can come hang out. You know, do you want to go on a trip out there with me?" and I was like, yeah, because I'd been to, you know, the Bay Area mm -hmm. and, you know, driven across country. And I was always, I was really smitten with, like, you know, the West Coast, like the actual coastline, you know, like all the, how the mountains come down to the sea and, you know, like the redwood forests. And I'd always, I was curious about this part of the world because I'd never been before. Mm -hmm. So I came out on this trip, you know, stayed for a week and just kind of drove around. I'm like, oh, wow, this is so great. There's... yeah. All this, you know, like natural beauty, um, like in Charlottesville, Virginia, I think that there was like one 
there's like one like sushi restaurant and <laughs> there was like a crappy Mexican restaurant. That was it, you know, uh-huh. as far as like cultural diversity it came out here and was like, wow, there's like Ethiopian food and yeah, all this, you know, a lot of, there's just a lot more stuff going on. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. People brewing beer and just, it was, it was kind of mind blowing, you know, I went to um, Embers, which was like, you know, a gay dance club and um, just a lot of stuff. It, Charlottesville at the time was just like super conservative and just kind of stuffy and, um, it's like an Ivy League mm, school. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm kind of rambling here. Where where, where am I going? Oh. No, that's beautiful. You're totally painting a picture in my head because I was just um, curious about your transition. So yeah, I how came, that came about. Yeah, and uh, I hit it off with his friend, and she she's like, "Well, I'm totally you know I was just like, oh my god, this place is, I love it out here." And she's like, mm. "Well, if you want need a place to stay." You know, until you get your, you know, get on your feet, you, you know, you're, I had an extra room. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, let me think about that. And mm-hmm. so I went home and just was, um, yeah, I felt like there was something I had to do. I had to like, cause I felt like if I stayed in my hometown, I was just going to like, you know, end up, you know, killing myself or dying somehow. <laughs> I was Christ. really depressed. and <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it was really, it was really, despite, you know, Virginia is a beautiful place, despite uh-huh. all that, it was a really dark place for me. And I really needed to just get myself out of there, just kind of like save myself. Okay. Dark is in the weather or like you had a just, past? No, just the that... past, just growing up there, like yeah. broken family, just like abusive people in my life. And just, yeah, so. That's unfortunate. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. that uh... No, it's, that something it's that you good. I with. had. I was fortunate to have a be. Able, I was fortunate to have been in a state of mind that allowed me to escape. Yeah. Or just you know, I knew it was it was scary as hell. You know, I just I didn't have a job out here. I had no friends. Mm-hmm. But I knew I just had this feeling, and that if I'd stayed there, I probably would not be very good. Mm. Um, and there were some other, you know, sort of like dream time, like, like subconscious sort of like things going on that sort of told me that Mm. I need to get the hell out of there. Mm. Yeah. And through, through Robert, you know, became interested in, you know, like Joseph Campbell, Carl Jung, um, other kind of, um, at one point I was in the Carlos Castaneda. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like his um you know interactions with the shaman mm-hmm. with don juan yeah um, so yeah i i knew i knew i'd kind of like yeah i had to i had to get out of there and it it was it was kind of like i was also kind of like had to like sacrifice myself too in order to be become i wanted to be a different person and so that was a way to do it kind of without yeah well, that's straight out of a movie, honestly. I mean, you moved. It, it does. It does stand out in your bio because most times when people move across the country, they move a few times because it's like, mm-hmm. oh, they're a traveling type person. But you, it's like, uh, it just says like you were in Virginia and then you moved to Portland and you've been in Portland ever since. It's like, wow, <laughs> that's a crazy move. But, yeah, uh, must have worked out because you're here now. So. Yeah, and. So, yeah, I was here for a couple of years before I went to school. And it's funny because I was, you know, like I mentioned, I read those Carlos Castaneda books. And I was really mm-hmm. into shamanism and dream work and all this, all that um, sort of thing. And the first people I met here were, um, they were, um, he, this guy, he was like a Vancouver Island um, Aboriginal, you know, person. And if that's, yeah. First Nation, I, 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 yeah, I, yeah. Indi- I don't know. Indigenous to Canada? Yeah, yeah. And, but he was, he was um, doing Lakota, like, ceremonies. There was a Lakota um, medicine man that lived here, and so he was doing, like, sweat lodges and vision quests, and um, I met him through a friend, and so I started, 
I kind of fell in with these people too, doing that. And that was, um, yeah, where am I going with this? My timeline with what I was doing, right? Yeah, no, well, your transition from Virginia yeah. to, to here and before PS Portland State University, yeah. you ran into someone that was into sweat lodges. So if he was indigenous to Vancouver Island, he was uh, like Native American, essentially. Yeah. And yeah. and I was up there. They have amazing art uh, totem poles that they do. Mm-hmm. But he was on the spiritual side of things and he had a friend and you were doing vision quests with his friend yeah no i was um yeah he's like invited me to sweat lodge and i'm like okay and then so that just kind of like light bulb went off again you know like it was you know it i was it kind of put me on this more spiritual path which is i feel like what i was was kind of on spiritual healing sort of path um so it was I found it it was very funny and odd that I those were like the first people I met and started get getting into that and mm-hmm. and a lot of it you know I was kind of moving out here I you know I was kind of floundering you know I didn't have an art studio I didn't know what I was doing mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't like an artist I didn't feel like one or um, so I did a vision quest and my the main thing I was like why isn't this working out for me why is my life just why am I why am I why isn't this happening, mm-hmm. you know, for me? What, what's, what's going on? I, can I get an answer from the universe about what's going on? You know, why, yeah. is it, why isn't this happening? So I was out there for a while, you know, f- no food, water, you know, you're just going out in the woods. And yeah. then um, the answer I got is, well, I forget when, but someone said, I'm not, no one's going to tell you what to do or how to do it. Uh-huh. You just have to go out and just do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought all along, I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll ask, the, you know, God or whatever you want to call it, Great Spirit, like, you know, looking for an answer, like, oh, that's what I should do. Okay, but yeah. the answer was, I'm not gonna. No one's gonna tell you. Yeah, you have to actually just go do it. Mm-hmm. So I walked out of there. And I'm like, okay, screw it. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go to art school and. Maybe that's how I, you know, maybe that's what I do. And mm-hmm. so I just started doing it. Yeah. I started being an artist. You know? That's it was, awesome. It was a very simple thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I went through that process and then went to art school. And um, and also, too, at PSU, um, I was able to, you know, study like, like Greek philosophy and Spanish mm-hmm. and all these other subjects so I found that very fascinating and enriching and you know influenced my art too um, so yeah that's so that's how you got wow that's a story I mean several stories yeah um, yeah yeah a lot of sub chapters to get you from to Virginia <laughs> to PSU and then you're at PSU for a few years studying uh, painting and printmaking, formal education in art. I feel like there's there's kind of two divergent paths that pe- that artists kind of walk. They either kind of do it themselves, mm-hmm. no no techniques, no books, no teachers, just kind of go for it. And then there's the people who go to the art school and do the formal training and everything. Mm-hmm. What was your uh, experience like at PSU? Was it net positive? Do you feel like you learned learned a lot that you use today? Yeah, like I, it was. So originally I went to PNCA and it felt a little more insular and, um, you know, I was, I was like twenty. I think maybe I was even I forget twenty five maybe when I started and so there were a lot of younger people there. Mm. Too, but then. I couldn't. I couldn't actually just afford it. After a year, I went to mm. the, because um, I didn't have any help from anyone no mm-hmm. financial help I went and talked to the financial aid people and I said well what's my student loan payment going to be like after four years like oh yeah six or seven hundred bucks a month I'm like holy crap I can't afford that yeah so then I went to PSU and I'm like cool I and you know you had you you had to like study you had to like take other classes fulfill different requirements like like I mentioned 
earlier, you know, like studying Greek philosophy and art history and mm. studied Spanish, studied Mexican history. Um, and there, you know, there was a, a, a variety, there's like a wide variety of people there. There are people from all over the world going to school there. Mm. You know, like I have one friend in particular who lives in Indonesia who actually went and visited a few years ago with, oh, my, wow. with my daughter. Um, and, you know, just like different age groups. And yeah, so I, I th that was really cool getting to interact with all these different people and um, yeah, people from all over the place. That's wild. Indonesia. So he came out, he came out here just to, yeah, he came to, yeah, go to art school here. Wow. And we, became, you know, we became buddies and I kept telling him, I'm like, oh, I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. And then I forget it's, I forget how long it's been, like maybe five years ago. Mm-hmm. Maybe, no, maybe six or seven. But anyway, we went and hung out with them and That's we're still wild. in touch. Yeah. So yeah, PSU is, <clears throat> is really good. And they were, you know, I had some really good teachers there and yeah, it's people I'm still connected to, you know, mm. even now. Well, there, it's not like a top tier, like art school or anything, but. Yeah, no, it's not. But like. I've never really been interested. I've never been interested in pedigrees or any of that shit so were there any uh any techniques that stood out to you as like really important for your for your artistic kind of abilities in art school because i've never been to art school and i i don't know many people who have been to art school so i just mm -hmm. wonder like what are they even doing in the classrooms <laughs> um it's techniques well there's a lot of you know f like well first year art school you you know you do a lot of life drawing and oh yeah yeah working you know like working from still lives um and doing just kind of basic design mm -hmm. sort of like exercises and it's all the formal stuff you know and yeah. then as you as you progress you get to you know take that information mm -hmm. and utilize it and to sort of you know, like create your own develop your own voice you know with, with yeah. having this technical form you know understanding of like formal issues if that makes sense no yeah you know, light totally. shade you know mm -hmm. um, color value um i guess value is light and shade light yeah. and dark um um, and printmaking, I found that fascinating too because you do the work on the plate and then, you know, it's kind of, you don't really know what it's going to look like and then until you run it through the press. So I was always, I, it, there was this, once it felt kind of like there's this little mysterious, spontaneous thing that happened there. Like you didn't know what you were going to get, you know, mm -hmm. and you put it in the oven and you pull it out and... <laughs> Yeah. So I never I, thought of it like that, but yeah, it is like that. I really, I really, that really resonated with me too. Just, and that's the same thing here, you know, mm -hmm. with painting. Um, so I kind of learned, I learned, I sort of glommed onto that, I think through printmaking. Um, and my, my painting was all, was just always kind of more drawing based too, you know. More drawing base, yeah. Felt like it, yeah. I wasn't, I, yeah. I wasn't really like. A, I've never been like a really good painter. Mm. <laughs> well, so you mastered like, the formal stuff, and then towards would, the end, you started probably, going more abstract. Yeah, or just not in not necessarily in school. Mm. Um, but. Yeah, where am I going? I didn't. I wouldn't say I mastered anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to say you mastered anything. I mean, you you got the fundamentals down enough to be sufficient. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I was really good with you know with figure like in figure drawing. Class. Mm -hmm. I could I could draw the figure really well and did made really beautiful drawings and. 
But it was cool though. That's at PSU my um, and at PNCA my figurative drawing teachers were like drill sergeants. It was like <laughs> it was hard work, man. They would yeah, and I was up. I was. I was up for the challenge, so they would really like drive me really hard. I'd oh, walk yeah. out there like sweating, like needing a Gatorade or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> just like, from getting the techniques the way they want them to be expressed on the on the canvas yeah. or whatever. They would just really push me really hard. Mm. Yeah, like yeah, it was good. But it's it's a very you know drawing the figures, you know it's kind of a formal sort of thing right but yeah this this one yeah these two teachers just and yeah it's hard to describe, i'd have to show you but mm. like she'd have the one teacher she'd have me like moving around the room doing the same pose like all on the same page so there'd be all these figures and different mm -hmm. shots and so yeah it's you know every little thing that you take in or learn it's, it's 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 all like they're you know operating in the background like software you know yeah yeah so no yeah it is like that huh i just wonder with like an abstract artist like yourself like that definitely helps with confidence i just wonder you're so expressive how much of that do you use now and are there other creative kind of uh, techniques that you learned in art school that are more useful to you than like the formal training. I feel like art history, studying art history would be helpful just for, for the sake of absorbing past artists' mm -hmm. works and being like, okay, I like this. I don't like yeah. that. Maybe I can do something similar to this person or not like this person. Yeah, for me, it's, it's not so literal. It's just like even... Like I mentioned, you know, like studying history, art history, even just language. All that's, all, everything you put in your brain goes into it. Yeah. You know, like what you had for breakfast. And <laughs> so I would, you know, it's just all kind of, it's all kind of in there and it just comes, you, you have to put yourself in a place where it's, you know. Where it all kind of comes out, it smushes out onto the canvas, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it, nothing. Yeah, I, I don't know nothing. Right, and a lot of I, re I realized too a lot. I was looking at more art too when I was in art school. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's really that. That is, there's something there, you know. Yeah. So not even in art art history. Even like art history, you know, I really dug like medieval art because it was really simple. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, funky perspective. You know, they didn't understand perspective. <laughs> it was very expressive. You know, medi me medieval art was very emotional. And um, yeah, and then things got messed up with the Renaissance, you know, all that. It's very, felt more rigid and. Yeah. It's funny how the the, um, dis the yeah the discovery of the perspective was like almost like a scientific discovery yeah, in was, the sense yeah. that it totally like changed the way art was practiced. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and to like you know like primitive art and yeah, I found all that stuff very very more direct and honest. Mm. Yeah. And it also, okay, God, where am I going with this? Yeah, it was very emotional, and it it wasn't just purely decorative, or you know, there was a lot of the form and func you know, function relating to form, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, the the whole like spiritual, ritualistic aspect of it too was fascinating. Yeah. That called to you resonate with you yeah hmm here's a question for the uh the younger artists who might be listening if you could uh give your give yourself some advice as you were exiting from art university into kind of like the real world of of making art if you could return to that for uh version of michael and give hmm. them some kind of advice what would you what would you tell them? Damn. That's kind of a 
advice. I mean, everything we've talked about, you know. More um, vision quests? Huh? More vision yeah. quests? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, people have people have different ideas. You know, different things they want to get out of life. Yeah. Like maybe some people think, oh, I know a lot of people in school were thinking, oh, I'm going to make money as an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, or that they felt they could, you know, survive that way, but, and then they stopped doing it because it's not realistic. You know, in their minds, it's not realistic. Mm -hmm. And the school is no longer, you know, dishing out wads of cash every semester for them to live off of. Yeah. So it's a little different when you get out into the real world. Um, I mean, the main thing I would say is don't go into, I mean, so there's practical things like don't saddle yourself with too much debt mm. if you want to mm -hmm. be an artist because, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to make a lot of money. You know, yeah. Chances are. And if you take on if you take that on thinking oh it'll be okay one day then you're gonna you know you're gonna find out that that's not the case mm -hmm. um so that's one thing i would say just you know be you know you have to be financially savvy in that yeah. Way. yeah realistic um so that's i mean that's just a piece of practical advice and maybe you know find find some ways of making money that um, you know maybe once don't take up too much of your time and allow you some freedom you know mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah so that makes that makes total sense yeah I like how you balance like the yin and the yang like sim simple practical like not too much debt but also you know And yeah, and yeah, advice for it's yeah. I mean, be true to your. I mean, it sounds cheesy as hell, yeah, but you just have to. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess it depends on what. It, and you don't have you don't have to be an artist to live a creative life either. You, know, mm -hmm. you don't have to. You know, maybe money does make you happy and being poor is not your thing, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Poor is relative, you know, too. Yeah. Um, but I think, I mean, I think if you are honest with your intentions and true to yourself and if you just work, I think you have to work really hard. Mm -hmm. Don't expect, you know, anyone else to do it for you and... I think things will happen eventually if you just work hard and are open to things. Yeah. You know? um, I think that's pretty sound advice. But yeah, I just have to work, work your ass off, you know? Yeah. And yeah, like it's also just be true to yourself, you know, because you, you are, you know, don't like chase trends or try to be mm. someone you're not or, you know. Don't think I would. Don't think you're going to move to New York City and become a famous artist. Mm -hmm. I mean, that people. I mean, when I was, you know, in school, that's kind of like, oh, you got to move to New York to be successful as an artist. Mm -hmm. But you don't have. I mean, you don't have to. Yeah. To me, just being able to make art throughout my life, that to me, that was like the biggest success ever it's not and it's not related to money or status or anything it's just mm -hmm. i've been able to make exactly what it is i wanted to do yeah which is i have no idea what that is <laughs> yeah um so yeah have you stayed in touch with any of the uh the soon to be famous new york artists from psu days well, I don't know. No, I mean, I had one girlfriend that moved to New York. Mm -hmm. She felt she um she went she went to grad school there. Mm, okay, at, but NY, that was, at NYU, that's a lot. No, I forget. Maybe it was Columbia. Oh, okay. I forget where she went? But that was just kind of in. You know, that was just that's that's I think a common sort of conversation. 
that people have, you know, like here in Portland. I mean, what are you going to do? You yeah. Know? I mean, there is more opportunity and things happening in like larger cities. Mm -hmm. um, but once again, I, I wasn't really, I had different ideas about success and mm -hmm. it wasn't really tied to money or like I said, status or, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I got into the Art Institute in Ch of Chicago for printmaking. Oh, wow. And I almost, I went to visit and I was like, the senior studios at the time were just like little cubby holes with like fabric, you know, like curtains. And it was, you know, it was probably almost 20000 a year. <sighs> yeah. I was like, and I felt a lot of pressure to do that, like to go to grad school. Like, mm. I'm like, I'm like, screw this. I mean, I I'm just going to rent an art studio and just be an artist. See what that's yeah. like. Because I mentioned that. I don't, I may have mentioned that earlier. I just, you know what? I'm going to see what it's like to be an artist instead of like an art student. Mm -hmm. See what that's like. Yeah. So renting an art studio was, you know, that was way cheaper. Yeah. And... I've been doing, I mean, that was, I rented the art studio, like, before I graduated mm. from PSU, and and I've had one my whole life, ever since, you know, mm. and granted, it was, you know, it was more affordable back then, <laughs> this is like early 2000s, you know. So. so you're in the art studio for the first time, you just graduated, and you're setting up your blank, blank canvases <laughs> with your paint, what is, uh... What's going through your head? What were those first few weeks like being an artist? Uh, the first few weeks of being an artist. It was, you know, it was exciting, you know, because I had studio, I got studio mates. I went out and found the space and okay. there were like three or four of us in the space. So, yeah, it felt like I was, it was, it was the right thing to do, mm -hmm. you know. Studio mates as in you had other people. Yeah, we were sharing the... like a bigger space. Okay, um, that's nice. Yeah. That's fun because then you have like a social side of it, like a camaraderie right. around the arts. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, once again, I was just kind of learning, just learning how to paint, you know? Mm hmm. I don't, yeah, I was, and I was working with oil. Yeah, I was, I was working with oils too at the time, but yeah, it's everything, you know, it's just all, it's just all been adding up. But it was rough in the winter, I must say that. There was no heat. <laughs> it gets cold here in Portland? Yeah, well, this is like a big brick and concrete building. So in the wintertime, the concrete like absorbs, you know. The cold? The cold. So at Oof. night, it's expelling. It's, 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 it warms up at warms up slowly during the day but then it cools off at night so yeah but during the during the day the, the concrete is all the cold is coming out of it mm -hmm. as it's warming up it was just it was freezing i would imagine that'd be really cold and i would imagine that would test that would test your uh yeah. desire to be an artist and you're like man i can't even afford heat yeah well so there's no heat at all there wasn't any heat but there, there was a possibility any. you could be warm somewhere else with money <laughs> Yeah, so but I you went, did. I, after yeah. a few years there, I rented a studio that had heat, and that was a game changer. Oh, yeah. So. It's funny how those bare kind of things that we can take for granted, are, they can make such a big difference in quality yeah. of life. Yeah, I was like, man, why was I all that suffering? Cold, <laughs> that terrible. yeah. Just annoying. But it was a good, it was good. A good, a good space. Mm -hmm. Good to just to you know throw myself because yeah, it's just, yeah it's just like throwing myself into the unknown mm -hmm. whereas grad school is more of a sure kind of bet thing yeah yeah so. when you got started because when you go back on your actual website and for people who are interested they can go to uh, michael michael's website where he has a really organized archive of all of your works going back to like i think 2008 maybe even okay. a bit a bit before then yeah, I don't so, know. So, <laughs> I haven't looked at it. It was like 08 or, or 07. <clears throat> but if 
if you were starting in like the mid 90s or the early 90s there's like a big chunk like a decade or so a decade and a half of work it's not really online so was that also kind of very similar to the stuff you're doing now um well a lot of it um the documented well it was mostly printmaking stuff that was you know back in the day where you took slides you made slides of your work you made slides of your work slides okay. i don't even know what it is no are you talking about slides like f f of film photographs oh yeah i'm familiar with that and then you'd have that as a record yeah there's they're in boxes somewhere i haven't bothered to scan them and take the time to put them online or Yeah, because like these are some of your work. I, I just took some of the, some of my favorite works of yours. Yeah. This is from your most recent collection. This is Jungle. I'll be able to yeah. put this on the screen later. Uh, and then this was like, bit. Oh no, this is twenty twenty two. Actually, also better to wait. Yeah. And then some of your older works. This one really stood out to me. I love the color on this. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. Yeah. All the color, just. Mm -hmm. A world of different colors. Yeah, my palette's a bit more less jubilant <laughs> these days. Um, yeah, the variety of colors. And then this one actually stood out to me too, fatigue. I was feeling this one two days ago actually when I was driving up. I was so tired. Um, but I really like the contrast of the red and the blue. Mm -hmm. I really feel like that. Yeah, there's a really, that's a really old work. It's changed a lot, it's obviously, since then. What do you mean? Like the meaning has changed for you, or? Oh, no, just like I, when I see that, I'm like, oh, wow, that's. So my work, well, my painting work, God, yeah, it's, it was very different back then. This is, what, what year is that? This is uh, 2012. That's 2012. Yeah, almost 10 years ago now, 11 years. Yeah, I, yeah, that's, it may be even older, I'm not sure. Mm. But when, um, this is an, this is another, was, it, was there a question associated with? Not really, I kind of just wanted to show you these are kind of the favorite works yeah. of mine. I mean, if there are any stories connected to these, like, is there a story behind this one? I was kind of curious, like, is this related to your personal life in some way or you know i don't i'm not that i recall um once again just probably just drawing and just be, you know messing around thinking, oh it's cool i mean i think yeah. this probably got painted over eventually um that happens a lot too things get you know destroyed or you know well over. like if it doesn't sell then you just you reuse the canvas yeah or if they just if yeah if, there, I mean, there's a bunch of paintings here that I'll probably keep working on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, maybe they made sense in the moment, and then, you know, a year from now, I'll be like, shit, it's not done. I need to yeah. keep working on it. Um, but my parents, my work changed significantly. So from that piece there to the one with all the colors. And yeah. Like, my, both my parents, like, died, like, 12 days apart. Like, Whoa! And I wasn't, <clears throat> I wasn't really that, you know, close to either of them. But it really, it was struck me. It was, it was pretty. It was crazy, like shattering time. So mm -hmm. I just came, you know, I I didn't know what to do. I just came in here and just started like just taking old paintings and just like scraping away at them and just. Sort of similar to the process that's you know I'm still engaged in now. It's a lot of destruction and pushing and pulling, and mm -hmm. um, so I kind of just worked out a lot of emotions like in here, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And it yeah it radically changed my work. I think of that when I see that that more simple painting. So it was more simple before then, but pre. Yeah, yeah, it's probably yeah more. Of, yeah, this it's, it's changed. I think it, I I really made a big breakthrough with losing my parents, which sounds sounds odd. 
a break as in a positive breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of Yeah. Well, I mean if 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 you had a negative relationship with a person and then they passed away, it's not necessarily a, a I don't want to say a bad thing, but it, I mean it's always unfortunate when someone dies, but if he, if someone's personal relationship was bad and someone dies, it's like it can be a relief in a way, in a weird way. I, I, I could see how it could be a relief in a weird way. Well, there was, and the, yeah. you know, both my parents were had been sick, and um, oh, okay. But there was, yeah, there were a lot of some unanswered questions, so there was a lot of frustration. Mm. So I kind of, yeah, worked it out in here, and it, it changed things dra- dramatically for me. Mm-hmm. Having that, yeah. Yeah, it really seems like there actually is a shift to just an explosion of of more color and more variety of forms after that. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing I wanted to actually talk about was uh, on your website, you only have one, one mural project, your dog's mural that you did uh, mm-hmm. here in Portland. But I... Did some fishing around. It looks like you did several murals. You did three for Outside In. <laughs> you did one for the uh, TriMet bus shelter and uh, one for for uh, Interstate Light Rail Line um, for a youth mural project. Oh, yeah. So you have a lot more mural work that's just not available online, or at least I couldn't find it. I can only find this. And this is... <laughs> some Which one is this? so this is the dog one. Oh yeah yeah 2007 you're like this small figure in this massive <laughs> mural that you're doing oh that's funny yeah yeah they used to be on west burnside but that's since been removed oh that's unfortunate it was a dog business they wanted yeah it was um, it was for outside in they had a um <clears throat> kathy oliver had this idea to start like a, a doggy daycare center as kind of like a job training program for like homeless kids. Um, so that, but that's no longer there. <clears throat> oh, that's too bad. I was going to go see it actually. But I did one in 2000 and tw- another one for outside in in 2020. Oh, um, fairly recently. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's out outside in has a new facility out on, gosh, I forget the address. It's out in East County. What's the name of the business? It's Outside In. Oh, it's called Outside In in yeah, East do, County. Um, they do um, outreach services for homeless youth, like job training, like medical care. They have a clinic. Um, okay. I think the one downtown also has housing. Just, all, you know, that sort of thing. That's what they do. Um, so I did the mural for their their original location, which is, it's, it's just, it's downtown. I forget the address. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a big mural on the facade of that building. And then I did the doggy daycare one and that's, that's been removed, but then they, yeah, they just opened up a new clinic and I don't know why I haven't put that on my website. I think the pandemic happened and then I'm zooming in because you look so different with short hair. I'm like confirming it's you. I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> He's like, <"Yeah." laughs> um, that's me. Yeah, no, that is uh, that's a big work. What's like when you compare those? It's almost like you're doing two different things. I mean, in a weird way, sometimes I look at people who do like giant murals, and it's like it's like a totally different breed of artist where mm-hmm. they're out there in the elements doing these massive, like they have to like use a, one of those construction things that elevates them oh, yeah. to like just do one line. And then you're also thinking about like, how is this going to look when I'm like a car on the road, like mm-hmm. 50 or 60 feet away? Like, yeah. What was, what was that experience like comparing that to when you're in here alone, intimate, quiet? Well, it's, you know, you do you do m- smaller versions of it. Like I did a painting that was like this big, just, you know, like one inch to like one foot scale, scale to start. Um, yeah. So all the all this all the you know kind of um, brainstorming and creative work mostly happens then. 
is when you're creating this, this smaller piece. Yeah. They need to scale it up. You know, you snap right. a grid onto whatever surface you're working on. Yeah. So it's, that's that part's you know not as spontaneous or as or creative as, as you know the making of the original. Mm -hmm. And you try to you you have to think about well okay how am I going to recreate this on a larger scale? Mm -hmm. you know, like I can't really do this kind of work and then faithfully recreate it because it's just not in the cards you know mm -hmm. so it has to be more graphic for me for this kind of, and they want to know too they want to the client wants an idea they want to know what it's going to look like on the building mm -hmm. yeah so the one i think for i think for both outside in buildings and that one too i did like a mock-up i i I made like a scale model of the building and then photocopied, you know, printed out the image and cut it out and stuck it on the actual model. Yeah. So you could see what it looked like. Um, so yeah, it's, it was, you know, it wasn't creating, you know, the work on site. Yeah. So it was premeditated, but there are, you know, you can take liberties with things. Like the most recent one I did. There were parts of it that, when blown up, weren't really working. So I just, I, you know, I, I could change things. Just axe and, it, yeah. And yeah, you know, make make different choices, you know, on site. Yeah, I'm really curious to see the other one that you did. Um. All right. What's I'm in, terrible. Huh? I'm terrible with like updating the the website. Yeah, it's just, you know. No, like, you have I mean you have some work, but it was like yeah, it would be nice to have the other murals on there. That'd be nice. But um no, it's not a big deal. I will I'll make a note of that. Are the murals? <laughs> I'm curious. Are the murals just cuz like it's nice to they give you like an offer that's too good to refuse or is it like is there something about the murals that recently has kind of like become a thing that kind of you like because uh, it does seem like a bit of a tangent from the work you're doing here with on the canvas yeah I mean it's different but um, I think I was like on an artist roster through RAC which is the Regional Arts and Culture Council mm-hmm um, so they have a roster of artists and so say someone wants, you know, they want to have a mural painted, they can look through the artists and say, oh, I like this person or that. Can, can we, you know, can we start a conversation with them? Mm -hmm. So Kathy Oliver, who was the di executive director at the time, was she saw my work I think through there or either she had seen it there or in a gallery and mm -hmm. she really liked it and she wanted something she liked my work she's like I want I want you to do I want you to do this project and initially I just I was like um I forget how it went down but I, I was like I don't think I I turned it down I'm like I can't do that I can't paint like a 40 foot painting yeah you know on perforated fucking whatever stainless steel mm -hmm. so I just you know I said no and then she's like I really want you to do it you have to do this <laughs> so I felt obliged and she, you know she's super sweet um, amazing lady mm. so I just once I it was kind of like I just threw myself in, in you know mm -hmm. into the pot of boiling water like okay I'm, oh, just gonna, wow. I'm gonna I have no idea what I'm doing I'm just gonna yeah I'm just gonna see what happens you know if either i fail or i succeed you know yeah so. yeah it seems like a success to me it looks great i mean yeah it's so it, huge so yeah i did the first one and then sub, you know subsequently they asked me to do more and so but it was never you know i never intended to be like a public artist you know i yeah Mm -hmm. And the way I work now, back then, I my work was more graphic, so it, easier for me to slide into something like that. But now, if someone were to see this and be like, "Hey, can you do a mural for me?" I'd be like, 
definitely not. I don't think this would. Yeah. I can't recreate that. Yeah. At scale. You could print it. <laughs> that would be a sick print. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah. So yeah, I kind of fell into that and. They've roped you in for a few more. Yeah. <laughs> just have you to go yeah. to. Hey, yeah. She's like, just do whatever you want. We, yeah. 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 The dog one was, you know, obviously more thematic. Mm-hmm. Which I didn't mind. There's, there's, there's dogs in my work still. Probably because of that. I didn't think of that. <laughs> I've, been, I've been seeing little dog shapes in some of my paintings. I'm like, why am I? I'm like, I have a dog. Yeah. Maybe it's from outside in. Weird, okay. <laughs> Just rote memory. She's like, I've done dogs before. I can do it again. Um, okay, I really like this question. I'm, I'm really yeah. curious what your, what your answer is going to be to it. If you could choose one piece of um, art to trap humanity in a room with to kind of experience that art for for an hour is there a piece of art that is that you really think uh humanity would benefit from sitting with um something other than my own is this just like in general in general yeah if there's an art or artwork that you think humanity needs right now humanity needs right now yeah Mm. I mean, I think, wow. Uh, I mean, certain things come to mind. Yeah, like what? Well, I thought of, um, like in the Ar- archaeology museum in Mexico City, there's um, like an Az- this Aztec sculpture, which is just so badass. It's like two, two figures with like serpent heads coming together. Oh, it's, wow. It's massive. It's massive carved stone, but it's... It's terrifying, you know. It's it's a hor- scary ass looking thing, but it's also mm. it's so it's it's so uh, it's just so sublime, you know. It's it's it has it's beautiful. It's massive. It's how it's, big is it? I mean, it must it must be at least God, I don't know, ten feet tall, maybe. <laughs> Whoa. It's a sculpture? Yeah. Out of? It's carved out of stone. Stone? Wow. Um, So, and... I'm trying to imagine that. So they live, in their world, like life and death were just, you know, one and the same. You know, Mm -hmm. they were very intimately entwined Mm -hmm. with one another. I mean, there was a lot of death, you know, in their... Well, they had like the... Sacrifices too, right? Yeah, there there's, had people. yeah, they believed that in order for the sun to come up in the morning, that they had to sacrifice a certain number of people, that it was essential for keeping the things in balance. And, yeah. Um, so there was a lot of that. So um, I don't know. It's that's very, just yeah, look, like that's a very powerful image. That is a very powerful image. And I think of, you know, Guernica for obvious reasons, you know, that Picasso Mm -hmm. painting. Um, And I can't, I cannot quote the story, but, you know, I forget, like, Spain allowed Germany to, like, bomb the town of Guernica. In, In Spain, it's kind of like a practice thing about this bombing and killed you know all these innocent people and I think that's a story is that what happened I think so okay but don't quote me on it I'm not it's been a while since I've visited that story but yeah same my history is pretty dodgy too but I do believe it it, it was related to the Spanish war in some way and, so it's uh, yeah so it's yeah it's a very powerful yeah image and it's you know it's scale wise it's you know, big, gigantic. Is it is it large? Yeah, I forget. I I forget the dimensions. I saw it in the Reina Sofia in Spain. The original. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. 
That must have been an experience. Um, yeah, so I, I think art that... Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a t- that is a really good question. What should we? What should we be? What what kind of conversations should we should be we having? be having? Really, yeah, that's what the question. I think the snake one is the serpent one is sick. I really want to go see that now, or at least go Google it at home. The two serpents going face to face and swallowing each other. Um, Guernica, yeah, yeah. Let's try to avoid a another war situation, right? If possible. Um, yeah, I mean, Van Gogh's like, uh, any, any Van Gogh painting would be good too, because there's, there's this beauty, there's beauty in everything, Mm -hmm. you know? Did you go to the, did they have the show up here for the Van Gogh immersive show? Did you see any of that? Yeah. Yeah. Did they have it in Portland? Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah. I don't know. Did, did, did it include paintings of his? No, what they did was it was, uh, they took his paintings and then they digitally captured them. And mm. then it was pretty much just like, uh, they kind of mi- added movement, added motion to mm. all the paintings. Yeah. Um, and the idea is that you're in a Van Gogh painting. I mean, it was light projections on the ceiling, on the sides of the walls mm-hmm. and stuff and it was immersive it was immersive it was polarizing too some mm-hmm. people were like other people were like oh my god it's amazing yeah. so yeah I'd rather probably just, I'd rather go see Avatar or something <laughs> IMAX or we did my kid and I went and saw you it. went and saw the newest one yeah yeah but um yeah I'm thinking what else I mean, any. I mean, look at a child's drawing. You know, mm-hmm. remember like how innocent we all are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and how simple and God it sounds cheesy. Happy, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Like my kids' drawings. You know, those things. Just, they're so simple, and I think. I don't know, that that could be something that humanity could. You know. Yeah. Stan being exposed to, you know, just like the simplicity and beauty of what it's like to be a kid, you know? Mm-hmm. Simple but colorful. And she's taken after you a little bit with some of these more abstract ones yeah. I see. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Do you have a painting you think should... Um, you know, for someone who asked this question, I haven't put a super duper amount of thought on it. But... Um, uh, you know, I really like uh, a lot of Dali's work, mm-hmm. and uh, especially like um, tuna fishing, which is just like this really kind of that's the strong, name of the painting. Yeah, strong mm-hmm. like rich blue, and then this giant fish, and it just it's just kind of like really beautiful. I don't think for any particular reason, just because I think it's a really beautiful painting. Also, of course, the uh, any of his like dreamy kind of landscape ones, mm-hmm. I think are are cool. I think I would share them just because I think they're cool. Though I wouldn't, I didn't have any <laughs> meaning like you. Or it's like let's have a conversation about uh, war or death, which I think are also cool um, topics to have, deep conversations to have. But um, no. No, nothing else comes okay. to mind for me. Yeah. Um, what is an uncommon experience which was so positive for you it makes you sad to think that most other people won't experience it? An uncommon... Can you say that again? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, just like, just like an uncommon experience... Because, you know, nowadays people are so, at least in California, it's a very trendy thing to say, like, oh, like, I don't care about material stuff. 
I want I want experiences. Like I spend my money on experiences. You know, some people spend yeah. their money on fashion. They like clothes. Other people like food. Mm-hmm. Although food's kind of an experience. I mean, anything could be distilled into an experience in a way, like the the experience of having a nice car. Like but an uncommon experience that that you had that was positive that like that you think mo- most people don't experience or won't experience. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean. I could say like finding like a, a, you know, like a teacher that totally changes your life could be a rare thing, but maybe everyone experiences some form, you know, some of something like that to one degree, you know, varying degrees. Mm -hmm. Um, It's rel. I'm a rel. I'm pretty relative oriented. relativist when it comes to philosophy yeah yeah so i don't think any experience i've really had would be considered that uncommon being a human being mm-hmm. you know like, like I, I mentioned like finding a teacher that really you know points you and puts you on a path in your life is being like uncommon or unique but then i don't know was there a particular teacher that stood out to you that kind of did that for you? Was it the well, yeah, Robert, Robert, Robert. Ricker, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, almost, yeah. Like it felt that kind of experience feels like oh, there's something the universe is trying to help me out here or something. Mm-hmm. There's some forces at work in my life that I'm unaware of. Mm, mm-hmm. And that that's happened in other ways too, like in just like dream kind of work, and you know, like when I came out of here and met those people doing that spiritual work, that felt I'm like, oh, this is meant to be. You know, this is kind of this path is kind of it's, there's some guiding. Felt like there was some, you know, like yeah. invisible hand guiding me. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. Maybe it's just being open to it. Yeah. Right. Do you f- do you feel like that has continued on? That pro- like, are you still in that kind of progression now, or do you feel like you've kind of arrived at whatever you were searching for when you were in your twenties, going on vision quests? Because I find in my own experience, there have been part times in my life where I've also kind of been very philosophical like what is the meaning of life kind of Mm -hmm. existential questions and searched for spiritual solutions or practices that could help with that Mm -hmm. and i'm always curious for uh folks that are older who've had more time to kind of play in that area Mm -hmm. if they've felt like they've arrived or if it's just a never-ending kind of practice that is exploration that people are doing um yeah, I wouldn't. I I think every like every phase of your life is different. There's always, you know, like having a daughter for me it was just like that. Also changed my world because mm-hmm. I never, I never thought it was possible. You know, that I could even because I I felt I, you know, felt so bad about myself and what my parents had put me through. I'm like, there's no way I could ever have kids or have a child. But mm-hmm. I knew I had to. For me, I'm like I have to do. I have to. Tr- I have to be open to this. I have to do it in order to prove myself wrong, mm. and to mm. to show myself that it, that it is possible to have a happy, healthy relationship with another human being. Mm. So that that was like a big. That was like leaving home. You know. Yeah. That was a big transformational experience. Um, so you know when you get when you, when you get older, you know too. It's like <clears throat> like as your body changes, you know your world. I mean things. That's also a big. You know, I'm starting like lost my best friend last year. Like my best best friend brother, like just died unexpectedly. You know he's like 54. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. So that that's been a big. You know that things happen to you sometimes that put you on a different path or change things, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever, spiritually. I mean, I feel, I've always felt really close 
to death or I've spent a lot of time thinking about it since I was a kid. Mm. But now, like, as I get older, it becomes, it's just, it's way less abstract. Well, it, maybe it's more abstract and more, like, in my face kind of thing. Mm. So that, but that, you know, that is, like, being born and dying are, like, the ultimate transformational experiences that we have as human beings. And there's everything in between, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I would never, I would never say that I've made it anywhere. Like even just pa- like starting a new painting feels like starting all over again. Mm-hmm. I haven't made it anywhere, you know. I don't know what the fuck it is I'm doing. Yeah. Who knows what's you know? Who knows? Did I answer the question? You did. And I had <laughs> okay. a, a very brief follow up. I can't resist. As I think I know the answer as someone who says they're a relativist, but I'm curious because you have. Uh, so much interest in philosophy and I know you've probably done a lot of thinking and reading about philosophy do you think there is a an objective purpose to human lives an objective purpose like like a non-relativistic purpose to all human lives so you you just mean just like a purpose Mm -hmm. is there is there meaning in life is that what you're kind of getting at yeah, is there meaning to human lives in particular? That, I mean, that was the biggest thing that came up for me with my friend dying. I'm like, this is all pointless. Mm. Why? And none of this, none of this has any sort of meaning. Mm-hmm. Um, like, why do I do this? What's, what is? I, I don't think anything really has any, any sort of. I mean, what is? I don't think there is such a thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is, what is meat? I mean, what, what does that mean? What does meaning even mean? So yeah, when that happened, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't feel like making art. I'm like, this is pointless. What the fuck? I mean, we're just all going to die. And mm-hmm. when you're gone, I mean, I don't know. I just, I felt there was really was no meaning to anything or, you know, Mm-hmm. And there, I mean, there really isn't. What's the point of anything? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it, too. You know? It's like, uh, so it's affirming, but also not very exciting to have that affirmed by you. you know? <laughs> but, well, there's the uh, there's kind of two perspectives you can take on it. It's like, oh, there's no meaning that's sad, or oh, there's no meaning great. So it's just mm-hmm. an experience that I can have. Yeah. Um, going back to what you were saying earlier, though, meaning, I guess, to me would be like purpose. So uh, like what is if there is a purpose to human beings, what would that purpose be? That would be the answer to what is the meaning of humans. And um, yeah, that's the, that's the question. Well, another wrestled wrestled with, I guess. I also had I know it sounds like everyone's dying, but I. I went to visit another friend who was like, actually, he had died. He died like three hours after I was had spent time with them. Mm-hmm. You know, he was out of it on morphine, just like heavy breathing, like on his way out. Mm-hmm. And I got, I did get an ant. I did get like a hit from that. I'm like, because once again, the question is like, what's the point? What's the meaning in life? And and so. Um, as I was there, you know, just kept telling him I loved him. I was thank thanked him for everything, and um, and then it struck me like, well, if there's one thing you can do in life, it's just to be kind, you know, to yourself, you know, to someone who's in pain, you know, to an animal, to a plant, to the earth. Just you know, being. I think the only real point anything is just to be kind Mm. you know that's a very simple thing but um, there's not you know you read the news and there's anything but that and Mm -hmm. it seems like the world is not a very (laughs) we're not you know no one's there's no kindness out there so that I mean if anything there's that you know yeah oh I like that so 
Anyway, it took me a year to come up with that. I mean, because my friend died this time last year, and then just recently, I was like, ah. hmm. yeah, just be kind. Yeah. Yeah. To... Well said. Well, uh, final question to uh, wrap up the the show, and then we'll we'll cover. Is it art related? It I'm is art related. It, like, it is art related. We can't talk about everything. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, and then we can talk about uh, your upcoming show in Atlanta and where people mm-hmm. can can find you online. So um, it's kind of like a hypothetical question. A mother is teaching her son about art mm-hmm. 100 years from now, and your name pops up like one of those little, you know, you have like your own page in the book with some of your art and maybe a photo and, you know, a little, a little, bl- a little paragraph. What would be... Hopefully it's more than a paragraph. Well, this is like <laughs> hypothetically, you know, like a oh, world know. summary of all the artists, oh, you know, okay. and so each each artist gets like a page or whatever, you know, okay. and it's like, it's a, it's a kid's book, okay. you know, the actual 500 page, you know, biography of you is somewhere else. Right. So, uh, what would, what would be like most satisfying to you, uh, for that little, little statement to say about like what your art was about, what your, what your work's legacy was? Huh. Question. What would I want it to say? Hmm. I mean, it's probably just some. I don't know. I don't know. That's tough. Um. He was stubborn. <laughs> did not move to New York City. Did not care about money. <laughs> Just wanted to have an experience with, you know, with, you know, this, yeah, like, yeah, God, it sounds cheesy too. Anything I say is going to sound cheesy. Um, God. Yeah. Cheese is not necessarily bad. I, I really mean, like, I mean, this is your. I do like cheese. He was really, really liked. I really love American cheese. <laughs> and, Oh, come on. I mean, it can be a little cheesy. It's your legacy. I mean, it's, it's the most important thing, arguably. Um, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I don't really... I had someone mention that not long ago. Like, oh, what, what's, what do you want your legacy to be? I'm like, I don't care about that. Mm. What is that? <laughs> yeah. I really don't think about those things, so maybe I can't answer that question hmm. I don't know. no fair enough different di- I mean different yeah different people value different things um, legacies I mean on a long enough timeline legacy doesn't really matter anymore either but uh, really the question was like geared more at like what is the meaning of your work to you would maybe be a better way of reframing the question mm-hmm like if you had to try try to summarize your work into kind of like a a few sentences what it's all about for you right. yeah i mean once again it might be you know it's, i think making art is is like a kind gesture you know for the world bringing you know bringing something into the world that's positive you know and not destructive or harmful mm. to other mm-hmm. people or to the, you know, yeah. But that doesn't really, that's, that's not really a good answer either. Well, I have, a, I have a really hard time talking about myself. I don't really, I can't believe I'm even doing this. <laughs> well, I appreciate you doing this, yeah. regardless. Um, and it is a hard question. And, yeah. uh, I, yeah. I, don't think of things in those terms yeah most some i mean some most artists don't i mean the show is very new so that is actually one of the hardest questions that that people have um 
in terms of answering it. Yeah, it could also be, look, he had fun with color. He liked drawing. He just, you know, look at the art. What does the art make you think of? You know, what do you see? And yeah. His, I mean, that is... Because the, the art has a life of its own beyond mm -hmm. me, you know? So... The life does have an art, art of its own. So, yeah, maybe, you know, that's... What does it make you think of? I don't know. He made art that had life of its own. Very colorful art, too. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you again for, for taking the time uh, to interview. You're, you're the very first artist in Portland, so I, I really appreciate uh, okay. yeah, you being on the show and everything. You mentioned earlier how you have a show coming up mm -hmm. in Atlanta, Georgia. Right. Yeah. What's what are the details on that for anyone who might be interested? Um, the gap. The name of the it's um, a you know a gallery there in Atlanta called Sam, Sandler Hudson Gallery, and I've worked with them. I think I had my last show with them was in two thousand fifteen. Mm, okay. So it's been a while, but we've been you know selling work pretty consistently since then. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's um, the first, yeah. Do they so have an the first, online gallery or it's only in person? I think it'll all, I think all the work will be on their website. Online too? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, in the process of putting it all together and then we'll have it photographed and then it opens on June 17th. Okay. Well, I'll be sure to uh, contact them or contact you to get the, the link to that and have it for the information and link it in the uh, video description okay. for anyone who watches this. And um, yeah, and then for those who wanted to like connect with you online, you have your website, right? Yeah, and there's, you know, like Instagram's good too. I mean, I'm not the best at it. <laughs> You know, like pictures of your lizard, pictures yeah, of your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> the Instagram seems more personal, but your website is, I think, a cool place for people who want to check yeah. out your work across time because they can go back yeah. and see a lot of different, like, you still have a lot of, of right. work there. So, yeah, I know that's the, yeah, that's the best for, yeah, I do a lot of, a lot of different things. I'm also a beekeeper, so you see a lot of that on my Instagram <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not that savvy when it comes to people like, Oh, do you sell your paintings on Instagram? I'm like No. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh I don't do that. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of an I find it the marketing thing, I just really yeah, just really I'm just not into it. Mm. Well, for those who are curious, it was Michael T. Hensley mm -hmm. yeah. com and yeah. Hensley is H E N S L E Y. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Great. Cool. Well, going on two hours now. Really? We just hit the two hour mark. Damn. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Michael, for, for taking the wow, time. It's two hours? Yeah. yeah. That's wild. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, oh my God, I got to talk for an hour? How am I going to do that? Did it feel.